are we truly aware that mental health concerns can manifest themselves as physical symptoms and vice versa? And because mental health concerns are not as visually um, acceptable or obvious as our mental health conditions, are they regarded as less real? And can emotional distress reflect a weakness or a characteristic flaw that should be just stepped over? The reason I am here this evening to speak to you is psych, uh, they've asked me because I have an understanding of these questions from all angles. As a senior leader of a multinational uh, pharmaceutical company with several hundred employees and 50 engineer employees of my own, and as an employee with very serious physical health conditions and an employee with very serious mental health impacts. I would like to think as a senior leader, I would have taught myself to be really up to speed with mental health and mental health awareness. It's only now I, can really, I could really advise myself about how good I could have been. I am not a professional, mental or physical. So what you hear me saying is my own opinion and my own voice. And that is just to reflect that some of my carers, given my medical condition, would have a genuine concern that I would say the wrong thing at the wrong time. <laughs> so when I do, it comes from me. I should have given you the flick because I missed the first slide. <laughs> okay, a little bit of my history. Very quickly, uh, I left school when I was 16 years of age, and after a year working in a warehouse, I uh, joined the army and I trained to be an electrician. It was tough, it did me the world of good. Um, and then, having finished that, I moved back to Cork. I was up in the car, I moved back to Cork, uh, and I was electrical contracting for a good number of years on small and medium projects. And we were not, on the, uh, after a few years, Johnson & Johnson announced that they were building a new orthopedic uh, manufacturing facility down in Ringeskiddy, and I wangled myself in to be the contracts manager for the electrical, because we got the electrical contract. We, it was very, very successful. And we did a very good job. I brought it in on time and then on budget. And then Johnson & Johnson, as they were validating uh, that site and bringing equipment in from all over the world, they asked me to stay on for a few years, or they asked me to stay on just to help them to do that on contract, which I did for two or three years. And then they gave me the opportunity to become part of their company. It was just fantastic to join a multinational, uh, to get all the opportunities, and I went back to adult education and I did, they sent me doing certificates, diplomas, you name it, management courses. I ended up with a, a, a master's degree, uh, an executive uh, MBA. It was just, this was just fabulous stuff for a guy who left school when he was 16. I was then headhunted by GE Healthcare, the pharmaceutical uh, company, and I joined their, their the senior management company. I was their engineering director for a few years and then I helped them with business transformation and we doubled the output of the pharmaceutical plant. And then in 2017, GE Healthcare announced that they were going to build a biopharmaceutical campus in Ringeskiddy. They were investing 200 million and four biopharmaceutical clients who were joining the campus were investing 100 million each and I was given the job of making sure that this happened. On, in my personal life, I was an avid cyclist. I cycled for over 20 years 
Uh, I raced in Hyde Park, I cycled the Pyrenees, I cycled the Alps, I cycled from Mizzenhead to Mallonhead, I loved it. I cycled 300 kilometres a week, both for my physical and mental health. In 2010, uh, I tied up with the love of my life, my dream uh, partner, and in 2017, I got down on one knee and I asked her to marry me. And when she said yes, I thought, does life get better than this? And on the right, you'll see, only a couple of weeks after I, I, I asked her to marry me and we planned our future, this house became available. Uh, it's a detached house, newly built, with a seafront, all glazy on the front. This was, this was my dream house. Now, at the risk of sounding um, arrogant and cocky, I can tell you, I had it all. I had it all. I had a career I was proud of and the work I had done. I had my dream partner. I had my dream house. Could life just get better? On Sunday morning, the 17th of September 2017, I went out for my usual cycle, my Sunday morning cycle as I did forever. I cycled about 50 miles and coming down the hill in Glenmire for yet an unknown reason, to this day, unknown reason, my front wheel stopped dead at 50 kilometers an hour. It's down here on the left, that's just a snapshot of a, of a security video camera because I was just passing, a, a man had a camera on his front gate and you see it in the background. I have a video if anyone is interested in seeing it. <laughs> but the front wheel stopped dead, the back wheel lifted, I was thrown out over the handlebars and I smashed my head off the road at 50 kilometers an hour with my body at 90 degrees to my head. Then my face dragged along the road as my brake and it acted as a grater and tore all the side off my face. Um, I suppose briefly, I suffered a very serious traumatic brain injury, uh, so serious now that my, my medical records uh, still show that the, um, the, um, the, the medical people back at the hospital classified me as uh, brain dead pre -fatal. I broke my neck and my back in two places, and for those professionals, I broke my C, my C1, my C2, <laughs> my T6, um, I broke my nose and tore half it off and the road tore all the skin off the side of my face. Um, the paramedics who rushed to the scene that morning, they quickly concluded I was not going to survive. And they had my driver's license, it, 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 it was in my pocket, and they rang the Gardaí in Middleton, where I'm from, to rush to my house and rush my next to kin so that they could be at my bedside in, in accident and emergency when I did. My fiance got a bang on the door that morning and as she went down to open it, uh, there was a second bang and she, when she opened it, there was two armed guard, or sorry, uniform guard, uh, <laughs> probably should have been armed, yeah. uh, there was two uniformed guard standing at the front door and a squad car. And they asked her, does Michael Noonan live here? And when she said yes, straight away she looked at him and she said, is he dead? And they said, we don't know, but we need to put you in the back of the uh, squad car and rush you to the hospital so you can be with him. And they did, they put her into the car and sirens blaring, they rushed her to the hospital. When she got in there, the 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 neurosurgeon on, on the day brought her into a, a family room and explained to her the condition that I was in. Uh, it wasn't good, it didn't look great, uh, my prospects were not good at all, and he told her that uh, the next 24 hours was critical, um, and at the best case scenario, maybe I would survive, but if I did, then I would be mentally handicapped, and more than likely, physically handicapped. So, words can't describe, I suppose, um, Alana had rang my immediate family, my daughter, my sisters. Words can't describe the reaction they had for the next couple of weeks. 
I wasn't in an induced coma for four days and then came into a, a state I'd never heard of before called the brain amnesia state, which meant I was conscious, I could talk, I had no idea who I was, I had no idea where I was, why I was there, uh, and I remained in that state for about five weeks. Um, the picture of me on the right there actually is quite a good picture because it was the plastic surgeon who took that after he put my face back together. It's a good job I don't have it before. <laughs> so, to cut it short, I suppose I was in uh, CUH for a long time and then I was transferred to the National Rehabilitation Hospital in Dunlera where I spent a couple of months. And then when I finished that, or when I got out of that, then I was taken in to Headwell. And words cannot describe to you, Healthy City, what Headway meant to me. Um, I had never heard of Headway before this. I was on a senior management team that had social responsibility budgets that charities looked for every year, and I had never heard of Headway, and now I depended on them. I'll come back to them in a little bit. So, right now, uh, I have made a miraculous recovery, and I've, the, the, the professionals in COH have told me that. Um, physically, I'm, in my opinion, I am very good. Apart from the side effects of my brain injury, um, I have cognitive defects. My executive functioning uh, is in fair disorder. My memory and concentration loss, which will reflect why I'm looking at notes, because I have no memory, uh, so that I can remember what I'm saying. Uh, I have six nerve palsy damage, so I have uh, uh, permanent eye, eye, eyesight uh, deficiencies. Uh, and severe, severe fatigue. Now, my... The one thing I will say, and, and, and you were saying earlier, the one thing that really, really helped me as well is my positive attitude. I always had a, pos a positive attitude to life, no matter where I was during my career. And then now in this state, I could only visualize me being perfectly healthy. My cognitive brain, I was able to function it, that no matter how bad things get, I firmly believe, in my opinion, if you, can, if you can tell yourself, if you can convince yourself that of anything, you can do it. The one saying I have is, if you can convince yourself that you can, or if you convince yourself that you can't, in both occasions, you are going to be right. Now, my physical injuries have impacted, have a serious impact on my mental health condition. Because if you can only imagine all you've ever worked for, everything I was ever proud of, all the um, adult education, everything that I'd ever done was now gone in a flash. Uh, and there was no reason. The, the, um, the guard of forensics and special forensics who've looked at that video and the bike, they cannot tell me what happened. If I had made a, if I had made a mistake, if somebody else had made a mistake, but it was all gone. So my mental health did uh, have serious impact from the condition I was in. I have depression. I suffer anxiety. My confidence is complete. Well, I won't say it's completely shattered, but it's, <laughs> it's very seriously impacted. Uh, especially on Monday mornings. When I wake on a Monday morning and I hear the cars driving up and down, people going to work, complaining about work and all the problems they have and their weeks are full of schedules and I just, I get so depressed that mine isn't. But I do have deployment strategies. So I do take notes. Headway have been a big help in, 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 in uh, my brain injury 
uh, strategies and I use a lot of these uh, still. So um, I go to the driving range. I've never played golf. I now go to the driving range every Monday morning. Uh, I connect with people as much as I can. I do an hour's exercise every day. I sleep, especially during the middle of the day because of the, and, and my sleep is important. And I fill my days with activities. Now, some of the activities I do have is headwear. I told you earlier, I don't have the words to describe what headway have done for me, what have meant to me, and only now I can see how critical headway is to a healthy city. And as I was there, and I got to learn about them, they have a, a, a little uh, place out in Balancholic that they own, and they were renting for a long time uh, in just next door to us here in Carrigahan. Um, they were renting a building and only recently uh, they were very, very fortunate that the site became available and they were able to buy it. So they were renting this one and this is Durham. So they now have great plans to build a, a, a state-of-the-art rehabilitation centre for Cork. I have volunteered as part of my rehabilitation to project manage this project for them. I honestly believe that as part of my rehab, we have to raise two million euros to build this. And I honestly thought as part of my rehab to do a two million project should be easy for me having had a 600 million project <laughs> before the accident. But, and this has given me, um, hope I can I, I it has given me back something to do that I that, that I can contribute to Cork and do something positive for the people of Cork and my next slide was um, the new plans that they have so um, and I am looking to and, and I'm in great company with the great politicians that I have and the commercial people that are here, if you do hear from me in the near future and you hear of headway, then you'll know why. And I know Cork will contribute to this because I, above most other people, can tell you why Cork needs this. It needs it. And it, it's people who don't know yet that they need it or that their family needs it. And I'm a great example of that. I never heard of them and I'm now totally dependent on them. Um, the last slide I had <laughs> to show you was a photograph of me. Uh, so I can finish up boasting. It was a photograph of myself and Alana getting married because we got married 11 months after my, my near fatal accident. And it is something that has really made me so happy and so proud and so looking forward to the life I have. I don't look back. It is one of the positive things, I think, in, uh, in any mental health condition. I don't look back at what I could have had, what I should have, or if the accident didn't happen. I look forward at the positive things I have in life. I can visualize a beautiful new rehab, state-of-the-art rehabilitation center out in Headwear that I will be going to very soon. So look, I would ask you to keep up the good positive work that you are doing on mental health at work because I think it is really, really important for any employee to know that the positivity that it is there and that mental health conditions do not become stigmatized as it still is in some places and the positivity will reap rewards for the company's productivity and success. Thank you very much for listening to me.